Hello, our Ask Me Anything guest today is Akshaya Bargava, who has vast experience in wealth management. He has just launched Investor AI, a product that makes investing more accessible. Hello, Akshaya, we are very happy to have you here. Hi, Margosha, how are you? I'm okay, thank you. So, Akshaya, can you tell us a bit more about your background and how it influenced your decision to set up BridgeWeave? Um, you know, I have 41 years of work experience, so uh, I'm not your typical 27-year-old entrepreneur. Um, if I look back at my career, I have, uh, I have two different you know, types of experience. I have many years of financial services. So I spent 22 years with Citibank. Uh, that was my first job. I moved to London from India with Citibank. Then I moved to Prague from with Citibank and moved back to London. And I did many things in many countries. Then I switched completely and joined Infosys, an Indian technology company, and a very large company. And I built a BPO business from them. And we went from zero to 8,000 people in four years. Um, it was very hard work. <laughs> we never slept, but it was a hugely successful business. Uh, we, we were generating what 26% post tax. We were growing 25% quarter on quarter. Uh, so it was a very, very successful business. Uh, I then spent some years in the alternative asset management, the hedge fund world, not as a money manager, but as um, creating platforms that provide services to you know, in institutional investors. And uh, I set up my own business and I sold it to State Street, the Boston Bank. Then I joined Barclays as Global Head of Wealth and Investments. And uh, in 2018, I set up Bridgeview. So if you look at it, it's a series of things and you know you sort of wonder what is the pattern here? Yeah. And when I started to think about Bridgeview, I sort of said, you know, I was, I was about 60 at the time, I'm now 64. And uh, I was coming on to 60 and I said, you know, I need to think about my life. And, and I said, in my 30 or so plus years of working, what are the moments I have been the happiest? And what are the moments when I felt I was really adding value, you know, to, to the world really. And, and I thought that there were three or four moments and in all those moments, the thread, the common thread was I was building something and I believed it would make a difference difference to the industry. Mm -hmm. And I think both for me, both these things come together in Bridgeview, and that's why I started the idea of Bridgeview. And, and our goal is very simple. We want to use advanced technology like AI to help every investor in the world make a better investment decision. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter whether you're a retail investor. It doesn't matter whether you're a wealth advisor advising customers on investments. It doesn't matter whether you're a hedge fund money manager, you still can do with some help from technology and it will help you make better decisions. So that's what we are mm -hmm. all about. Yeah, so uh, so actually you answered the question we would like to ask you at, uh, <laughs> right now about your product, Investor AI. Um, uh, uh, so, but if you can elaborate a little bit more about the idea uh, behind Investor AI and uh, why you build this product and, and for which target users it's built for, who will be using it? So, uh, Lucas, that's an excellent question. Now, let me give you an analogy. You've seen the Iron Man movie, right? Yeah. So, <laughs> you, know, you know, when he first discovers this, uh, you know, power source that he puts in his chest, that's a particle accelerator. That is the one that provides the power for everything, right? It powers his suit, it powers his computer, it powers his you know, helmet vision and all the rest of it. And it's an inexhaustible power supply. So the heart of it is the particle accelerator. Similarly, the heart of Bridgeview is the ability to generate very high quality investment ideas and signals using masses of market data. 
Mm-hmm. All our signals are predictive in nature. So, so and and you know we are very different. We don't do we do eight hundred million calculations, but those calculations are really meant to create data, which we then look for patterns across the last ten years, and uh, we convert these patterns into visual images, and then we convert our algorithms into these visual images, and then when there's a match, then that's a signal. Mm-hmm. So what the what the computer is doing here is not lots of analysis, but it's doing pattern recognition. It's like facial recognition. And, mm-hmm. and the more you train, so the more you know, occidental faces it sees, the better it gets at recognizing a Western face. The more Indian faces it sees, the better it gets at recognizing an Indian face. So this way, the more patterns we show it, and that's how we've trained them. So, so it's a very high quality engine, a very different engine. Mm-hmm. Now, these signals in their raw form are very hard for people like you and I to understand. So we package them. The first package we have created is what we call Investor AI. It is a mobile app. Mm-hmm. You don't see the you know, particle accelerator so that is hidden inside. But you see this output of it. Mm-hmm. And that output is meant for people who either know what they're doing in terms of the stock market or people who want to learn. Mm-hmm. And there's a whole large community of those. So that is one example. There is another package that we have just released, which we call FTM portfolios. FTM stands for follow the machine. And this is meant for people who can't be bothered to find out right time to buy, right time to sell. So it just creates a portfolio out of the best signals. Mm-hmm. And with one click, you buy the entire portfolio. Once a week, you get a message from me saying your portfolio is rebalanced. You go one click, your portfolio is rebalanced. That's all. Mm-hmm. And we're going to be coming up with newer and newer things over time. So think of us as the company that can generate really high quality signals. Mm-hmm. Our first and our flagship product is Investor AI, which packages these signals for a retail investor. And by the way, all your uh, viewers, whoever is listening to this, if you want to see how it works, please go to the Play Store or the App Store. It's called Investor AI, one word. Download it, play with it, and let me know what you think. Mm -hmm. Great. So, uh, like a side question to this is uh, because you mentioned that it's also uh, a a solution for, uh, like, you, you call it retail investors. Uh, so it's it's a very interesting. I, I, I guess there's a very interesting challenge uh, with this group of users that sometimes you have to educate uh, them about uh, you know uh, about the data they, they they see or no matter how you will package this uh, uh, this signal or data you want to provide to them there will be always probably some kind of a gap in knowledge of understanding uh, what uh, comes from uh, like your your engine. Yeah. So, um, do you do you do you agree that this is a challenge in such a solution? And if yes, how you how you address this? Uh, now smiling because this is a real problem that we are facing. Mm-hmm. So you know, in in Bridgeview, um, you know, I'm the founder. All my team are very very experienced people, and one of the reasons our app is so different and so you know unique from everything else because. The 20, 30, 50 years of experience just shows in what we do. Okay. Now, the flip side of that is that uh, feedback we started to get is that it's not very easy to start. Once you start, then it is wonderful. But the first 15 days are not very easy. You know, and As you know, when you launch anything in the market, if your first 15 days are difficult, then it is difficult. Mm-hmm. So somebody introduced me to a person. And I will tell you more about it. But I was amazed. This is the most intelligent person I've met. And he said, I don't like this. I don't like this new app. This has to change. That has to change. This is too complicated. This I don't understand. (laughs) I said, oh, really? So anyway, long story short, he's now helping us redesign some of our journeys. Mm -hmm. He is 22 years old. Mm -hmm. So, (laughs) you know, so he's working at it right now. But uh, when he's finished, I want to say that Investor AI is an app that was founded by a 64-year-old, but is designed by a 22-year-old. 
So a very valid point, a hugely important question. Uh, and I think every startup faces that. Mm -hmm. And uh, we are lucky we have found a somewhat unique way to solve it. But you know, the other thing is this problem is never solved. You can never be perfect, yeah. least simple. You know, you have to, it is a journey and you have to keep working at it and keep improving. So, you know, mm -hmm. so it's a never ending journey to perfection. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let, let's go back for a moment to the uh, to the technology side of it. You mentioned uh, uh, that uh, you use, uh, in general, like processing of a huge amount of data and artificial intelligence. Um, so, um, yeah, if you could tell us a little bit more about this technology side of this product, and okay. uh, it, it would be probably quite interesting to know how you try at least or a plan to use artificial intelligence to help to solve the problem. Yeah. So uh, ha happy to tell you. Um, think of it in three parts. Okay. So the first part of our technology is the ability to take in data. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we subscribe to data sources. These are very expensive. Uh, if anybody is a subscriber, no. know. Uh, so we spend a lot of money on data. We then take that data, and so we get 900 pieces of information for every security that we cover every day. Mm -hmm. We then have to compute something based on the data. So we do about 800 million calculations a day. Mm -hmm. Once we have the output of this, then it goes into our algorithms. Our algorithms are looking for breakout patterns. So for example, one of our algorithms is called Alpha 330. And as the name might indicate, it means it looks for stocks that have a high probability of delivering 3% return in 30 days. Mm -hmm. Okay, And it generates 500 signals at any point in time. So it is very productive. There are lots of stocks that can do that. So, it has, so that algo has identified a visual pattern of how a alpha 330 breakout looks. And ability to convert data into computer vision, as you know, is, is quite important, by the way. That's how facial recognition works. Mm -hmm. So once it, the algorithm is created with that visual pattern, it then goes and looks for those visual patterns in all the data. And wherever it's saying, boom, that's a signal, that's a signal, that's a signal. You know, So we identify, we create signals that way through pattern recognition. Mm -hmm. So that's the second part. So first part is data prep. Second part is uh, uh, signal generation. The third part is we capture everything that the user does. So we know that Lucas looked at Tesla, and then he looked at Amazon, he looked at Facebook. So I can maybe there is a conclusion that uh, does he like technology stocks? Does he like large cap? Does he like uh, growth stocks? So you know, so we start taking making a real time profile for you. Start increasing the weightages of this thing. Then Margosha comes along and she says, I like, uh, you know, um, Walmart and I like Amazon. And, uh, and, I, and she looks at, so the, what she's looking at is very different. And uh, so then her profile, so we have an individual profile for every user that changes in real time. Mm -hmm. And that's the, that's where the AI is learning about the user. So, and they get better at showing you what might interest. So this is what Netflix does. This is what Amazon does because you, you know, bought a pen here, here are 40 pens you must look at. I don't know why they think that once I bought a pen, I need to keep buying pens. <laughs> once I bought it, it's over. Anyway, jokes apart, but, but that's what it does. So that is the total engine that we have. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. Very interesting. Thanks for this. Uh, so, um, um, you launched your product uh, quite recently. Uh, so we, you already mentioned about those challenges of you know, being a startup, launching new product, and you know, the general problem of learning curve, which is always kind of a step one at the beginning of, uh, uh, of the market adopt adoption. So uh, we are quite uh, curious about, do you already have some feedback uh, from, the, from some of your early adopters? And do you recognize uh, uh, any potential challenges in, in you know, achieving the proper market adoption with your product? So 
look, market adoption is always, always a big challenge. Mm-hmm. Okay, so I will never be, never tell you there's no problem. Ah, it happens. All you need is a good product. No, you need a good product and you need good distribution. So our primary strategy is to work with partners. So our primary mm-hmm. strategy, go to market, is B to B to C. Okay. Where the middle B is our partner. We are the first B and the C is our customer. So that is our primary go-to-market. But what we found that in order to start the conversation, you have to have some customers. You can't have zero. Mm -hmm. So I can't come to you and say, Lucas, you have a great platform. You have 50,000 customers. Please uh, distribute my product. And you say, how many customers do you have? And I say, oh, zero. We just started. So you'll say, go away. Come back when you have customers. So we started some small digital marketing effort, spending very little money. We have about 12,000 customers, registered users at the moment, mm-hmm. of which 6,400 of them are monthly active. So they come to us at least once a month. And mm-hmm. we've been doing this for the last four or five months, mm-hmm. soft launch. When they come, they spend on average seven minutes, 6.9 minutes on, on my app. Mm-hmm. And if you're familiar with the app world, 6.9 minutes is huge. Mm-hmm. Uh, I asked a friend of mine in Barclays, and I said, how much time do you spend, your people spend on the mobile app? He says 1.3 minutes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, so uh, 6.9 is huge engagement. People have fun, they like using it, and yeah. they play around with it. So, so that's our experience. Um, We also found exactly the problem you alluded to earlier, the first 15 days, 30 days. So we've we've started uh, something called Investor AI Academy. Mm -hmm. And we teach people about investments, about how the app works, how you should think about good stocks, how you should think about bad stocks, all the rest of it. Uh, We do a webinar every Saturday, which I personally host. I've been doing it for the last four or five months. So we have 20, 30 webinars. There are recordings on YouTube. You can look at it. And we openly tell people when users ask questions and it is, you know, it is so active. So mm-hmm. we typically present for about 20, 30 minutes and then there are questions. We have to shut it down. So you guys stop, no more questions. <laughs> um, and, and, you know, my experience is that many of these are very young people. They are so hungry to learn. They are so hungry for knowledge. And I think as an older generation, I feel it is my responsibility that whatever I build, educates and informs as much as it helps. Mm -hmm. Because that is the only way we will create a generation of responsible and good investors. Mm -hmm. Now, people like Robin have done wonderful because they made it very easy to buy. Mm -hmm. Okay, but what do you buy? (laughs) You know, everybody will buy Apple, Facebook, Amazon, Google, you know, Tesla and that kind of stuff. But nobody will buy beyond spring. Because you never heard of Beyond Spring. Beyond Spring, look it up. It has gone up 137% in 20 days. And we identified it day one. Mm -hmm. Nobody will identify plug power. Plug power went up 230%. Because you just don't know. Mm -hmm. And that is why you need good quality information, which is what we give you. Mm -hmm. Great, great. Uh, So, Gosha, up to your questions. Thank you. I just would like to comment because I I really, it sounds really exciting. And uh, I think it's a really clever way how your app approaches uh, investing. And for me personally, I've I've downloaded uh, the app. Uh, It feels like a discovery tool. Uh, It's got welcoming design. So it's like, I, I totally agree. I think I like it. I really like it. Thank you. It is a discovery tool, but it's a self discovery tool. And with some help. So, you know, we have deliberately as a strategy decided we will not give advice. Mm -hmm. We are not a robo advisor. If you want advice, please go somewhere else. And if if I, let me give you an example of the UK market. UK market is 17.6 million active investors. Mm -hmm. Of the 17.6, 4.2 million get advice. That means 12.4 million do not get advice. Now, I think out of the 12 million, honestly, there are about six or seven million who are very, very small. They should be in a savings product rather than trying to invest. Mm-hmm. So if you, even if you take that, there's a five, six million unadvised who don't want advice. Mm-hmm. 
who want to do it themselves. Mm -hmm. That is our target market. Mm -hmm. It is bigger than the wealth management target market, which only focuses on advice. Mm -hmm. So that's how we are, but that's what we are doing. We want, you know, if you're interested in, in investments, uh, Agosha, we want to make you Iron Man. You can fly. <laughs> you know, you're the human. And investor AI is your suit. About the future of uh, wealth management, uh, how do you think it will change in the coming two decades? And how can technology assist in this transformation? That's an extraordinarily good question. I think in the coming two decades, technology is the transition. You know, so without technology, nothing can happen. But what is happening in wealth management is the traditional wealth management is, you know, where I you give me the money, I manage it for you, and then you make some return. Or I give you advice and you do what you want and I charge you for advice. So the old model is wealth management, where you pay me for what I do for you. Okay. I think this is going to completely change. Now, I don't think wealth management disappeared, but it will diminish in importance. The new model of tomorrow, what I call wealth enablement, where you pay me for tools that I give you that allow you to do what you want. Yeah. Okay. So, and that is very different. Uh, and wealth enablement is going to be based on self-service, it is going to be based on organic discovery, it is going to be based on a digital platform only, and a mobile, not even web. Uh, it will be based on, uh, you know, curated ideas coming from trusted sources. Trusted sources will not be banks or institutions, they will be friends, they will be colleagues, they will be people you trust in your social life. It's a very different world. Mm -hmm. And the digital consumer of wealth investor of today will drive this change because they just won't engage with the old model. They will want a new model. So I think a whole new model has to emerge in the world. And, uh, and I come from the wealth industry, as you know. So, so I, I'm very passionate about this, as you can see. I really think the wealth industry, if it does not do anything today, will is going to face a massive problem it will be an existential threat for them mm -hmm. but you know and that is what we are trying to we are, we are trying to create the wealth model of tomorrow mm -hmm. it sounds really really exciting and uh, can you reveal any future plans for uh, for bridge weave and uh, any additional uh, products that you are um, yeah so you, you, you heard my vision so we have the we, we have the particle accelerator right which is a core engine that will always stay now yeah. we have a version for the retail investor we have a version for somebody who doesn't want to make daily decisions we are coming up with a new version a version which is on which is a trading bot that will allow you to train the bot to your requirements, and the bot will just go and buy things, buy and sell things for you. Mm -hmm. We want to look at a higher end version of our algorithms uh, for uh, money manager like hedge fund market. So, for instance, in investor AI, you will see no short recommendations, and that is on purpose because we don't think retail market. We don't want to give short recommendations. No, if somebody else does it, that's fine. But if you're a hedge fund manager, then I can easily give short recommendations to you because you have the knowledge and the experience. Mm -hmm. So there'll be higher end. Of the thing. There's another uh, thing we are talking about is how do, how do we create smaller versions of our insights and micro usage? So there's a whole world of things that we are working on. Um, to watch this space, lots of things will come. We will. Thank you. So uh, this this was actually our last question, and uh, thank you, uh, thank you for sharing your vision. It really is contagious, and uh, I wish you all the best with uh, Investor AI and all the developments. Thank you so much, and thank you so much for inviting me to speak uh, to your audience. Thank you. Thank you.